candidate for this week's makeover is this styling head that I bought at the Dollar Tree a couple weeks back because I thought it'd be interesting to try to turn her into a piece of spooky decor. So to get started, I'm inspecting her and I found that she has very little hair, which I mean, it's a Dollar Tree item. I don't know what else you'd expect. So I'm removing the little bit of hair that she does have and snatching her, <laughs> her tiny ponytail. And I'm getting started with removing the hair plugs from the inside. So I decided not to remove the head from the stand and just cut a big old gash in the back of her head to try to get the rest of the plugs out. And for some reason, I struggled so hard with this. I tried using my pliers, I tried using my usual screwdriver technique. At a certain point, I even just shoved my little fingers in there and just started just pulling them out by hand. And eventually what I ended up doing was flipping the little her little head flap inside out and just making the access easier for myself and using the pliers and that worked eventually. It just took a fair bit of time. But once I was finished getting all of the plugs out, I could finally flip her little <laughs> her little skull cap back the right way out and move on to removing her face with 100% acetone. Getting all of the paint out from her lips was a little bit difficult because her head was kind of stiff and so I couldn't like squeeze it out the way that I usually do. And yes, I could have gotten a Q-tip to make this easier for me, but I refused to get up out of my chair, so I just struggled for a bit instead because that, that equals about the same amount of time, right? And once her face was completely clean, I could hop right in with acrylic paint for her face up. So for this look, I want to create that sort of cloudy, dead-eyed look because, you know, she's sort of a decapitated head. So I want her to look a little dead, a little zombie-ish. So I'm going in with different shades of gray. God, I hate that, that book ruined that expression forever. And uh, keeping it the lightest towards where her iris would have been and just blending it out, darkening up the edges, just going back and forth, trying to create this effect. It's been a while since I've painted a doll face that like, I'm doing this amount of blending on it. I, I think I've been sort of doing everything in basically flat colors for a while and then letting the chalk pastels handle any shading. So it was fun, you know, to change it up and work on a head that was this big. I think I've been kind of on a streak on of like working with really tiny heads and tiny dolls. So it was nice. It was nice to have a lot of surface area to worry about for a change. I was really pleasantly surprised by how cute her face mold actually is. Like, I guess my expectations are pretty low because of the price point, but I think her face is actually really cute. I don't think the eye shape they gave her originally was like the most flattering one for this face mold, and I found giving her these really big eyes just, I don't know, it just looked better on her face in my opinion. I sort of took her eyes all the way up into the sort of crease where her eyebrow, like her brow bone is. I just basically ignored her brow bone and decided, eh, she doesn't have one, it doesn't matter. Eyelids who? Eyelids where? I don't know. Um, now I'm giving her her eyeliner slash lash line. I decided to sort of paint the lashes on her and go for this really bold sort of lash look. These like sort of chonky little lashes. I thought I thought they were cute.
I really love the lining the bottom of her eyes. I feel like, I don't know, it just like brought things together so quickly and I just, it, I, I really started to see things coming together after I got that bottom eye line on. Giving her some more chunky lashes on the bottom as well. I just, I just really like the, the spiky sort of lash look. I think it's cute. In the end, I feel like it came out a little bit drag-like were, were the vibes, which I really don't mind. Once her eyes were finished, it was time to give her eyebrows, and for this brow look, I want her to have that sort of like concerned, sad sort of brow expression where they're sort of raised in the center so she looks a little bit like, I don't know, I want her to look sad. Wouldn't you be sad if you were just ahead? I feel like that would make me sad, so I want her to look sad. Which was a little bit of a challenge considering she literally has a molded on smile, but we'll deal with that later. With her brows finished, I can move on to her lips, and I decided to give her black lips because, I mean, A, I love black lipstick, and B, I felt like black would help camouflage the original shape of her mouth a lot better than like a lighter color would because you it sort of masks some of the shadows of the original molding. And I'm sort of like bringing down the corners of her mouth to make her look a little bit less smiley, a little bit more sad, and like a lot of my dolls, I am going kind of outside of her original lip molding to just make her lips look fuller. Uh, that was also sort of part of trying to, to camouflage the original shape of it. While the black paint was still kind of wet, I went in with some dark red paint to sort of bring a little bit more interest so it wasn't just flat black. I thought adding a little bit of red, I don't know, I thought it looked good. I did it because I thought it looked good. Isn't that why we do most things? I also think I was just really enjoying and trying to take advantage of the fact that for the first time in a while I'm working at a scale that's big enough where I could do things like blending, you know. On a really tiny doll head it's pretty difficult to do, you know, have the space required to do stuff like that. While I was waiting for her lips to dry, I decided to go in with that red paint once more and make these little veins along the side of her face. It was just like a really satisfying process and it, it I don't know, it just really added to that sort of corpse zombie look like, oh, maybe she's like infected or has these sort of burst capillaries beneath the skin. I just, it made her a lot more interesting than just being a pair of eyes and a pair of lips, you know? I also think I just sort of missed adding veins to dolls because I feel like it's been a while since I've made a zombie doll. I used to do it kind of frequently because it's a good choice or a good option for if you have dolls that are missing limbs and if you don't have a limb to replace it, you can just sort of make it look like a gross zombie wound and I, I really used to get a kick out of doing that and who knows maybe I'll I'll probably make another zombie doll on this channel at some point because I like doing it and it feels like I don't know it's just so hard to get a hold of like replacement monster high parts sometimes or like they cost so much money and I'm like I just I don't want to spend like 10 20 bucks just for a pair of arms you know, like I can get a whole new doll for that much. So I'd rather just find creative solutions to make up for these missing limbs, you know? Now I'm going in with some white paint to give her some little teeths because I just, it, she has the molding for it. So I feel like it would look weird if I just left that blank 
And so I'm, I'm giving her some teeth and I'm really just slopping it in there right now because I'm gonna go back in with the black paint to sort of clean it up later. I ended up putzing with this a lot more off camera because for some reason getting the teeth shape right is something that has always been a bit of a struggle for me. Once the paint portion is all done and dry, I go in with chalk pastels to do her blushing. And for this face, I'm going in with a lot of blacks and reds around the perimeter of her face to sort of make it look a little bit more sunken in and a little bit more corpse-like because, you know, it sort of desaturates everything and... I don't know. Black probably isn't the best choice if you're making a character that's supposed to be alive because it sort of like dulls everything down and doesn't look very lively, but she's not supposed to look lively, so it works out. I'm gonna take a quick moment to say, if you watched this far and you liked this video, consider subscribing! I put out new videos every week, and I have a lot of spooky stuff planned for the coming fall season, so you don't want to miss any of that. I also have the link to my store in the description if you want to perhaps purchase any of the stuff that you've seen me make on this channel. Uh, a lot of it will be available there, and you could have it in your house and look at it as often as you want, and it helps support the channel and helps me be able to purchase supplies and continue doing this stuff. So do that, like this video, comment on this video, share it to your friends if they like art stuff, all that sort of fun stuff really helps me out. Now I'm just adding her catch lights because even though she's dead, I think she still deserves a little spark of life, you know? She's, she's undead. And I'm adding a little bit of a highlight to her teeth that I end up futzing with some more off camera. And once that's all done and dry, I add a few layers of liquid sealant. For her hair, I am once again using this black yarn that I've brushed out and I just gave her this little bun with a pair of tendrils to frame her face. Now for her outfit. It feels very generous to call this an outfit considering the fact that she does not have a body. But anyway, I am just gluing this white lace around her base because I just felt like having just a naked base down there just looked kind of tacky. So I finally bought these silicone thimbles because they had them at my dollar store. And I was honestly very excited to try them out because as some of you may well know, I have a penchant for burning myself. And I guess it was nice to no longer need to burn myself in order to like smooth things out and press things down but i don't know there's like an element of like not being able to feel what i'm doing that was a little bit like hard to get used to because i don't know before feeling how hot the hot glue was <laughs> is sort of what informed me on like how ready it was to be like butts with or if I still had time to manipulate things around and I just felt like I was missing out on part of the experience but realistically I know it's much safer to use a thimble and not burn myself but I guess safety just takes some getting used to. <laughs> As a final touch, I decided to add this white ribbon around her neck in order just to create a little bit of a collar and just have more of a clean edge around the top there. I found this hard plastic, sort of spooky little cloche at Target the other day for five bucks. 
I just knew it'd be great for this project because it is the perfect place to display my beheaded gal. And with that, she's done! Here's the final result. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope to see you all next time. Love you, bye!